welcome to Panda 2 Building Endless Runner Game Tutorial. In this tutorial, we will build a simple endless runner game from scratch. Start by downloading the project file located under this video. Once it's downloaded, unzip it. Then, click on the Open Project button and select the index.html file. Now we are ready to start. First, we need to load our assets. Click on the Assets button to see all the media files that comes with the project. Start loading the files to the game with the Add Asset function. You don't want to add that last player.png because it's already loaded from the Atlas file. Click the Assets button again to switch back to the classes view. Now, let's move on to the main scene. This game is going to use some physics. So, first thing we need to do is create the physics world. We do this by creating a new instance of the physics class. Next, set the physics world Y gravity to 2000, so things will fall down faster. Physics world needs bodies. Start by creating new body that will be used as a floor. All bodies need shapes, so you can choose from rectangle and circle shapes. For this tutorial, we will use rectangles. Set the rectangle's width to match the width of our game, and set the height to 60. Next, set the position for the body. The center of the shape will be at the body's position. Our game is going to use different collision groups to detect which kind of bodies are colliding. Let's put the floor body into collision group number 1. Since we are not going to move the floor body, set its static variable to true. This way, the physics world won't be using any resources for the body, and it will stay in place. Last, let's add the last shape to the body, and the body to the physics world. Now, save your project. If you turn on physics debugging, you should see the floor body in the bottom of the game view. For obstacles and players, we will use layers. That way, the player sprite will always be at the top of the obstacle sprites. We can create layers by using the container class. Remember to add the container to the stage. Now, it's time to create our first class. Name it as Player. This class will have an animation created from the Atlas file. We can do this by creating new instances of the animation class, and use the Atlas file as a parameter. Now that we have our animation created, change its playback speed to 15 frames per second, and play it. Go back to the main scene, and create a new instance of the player class. Add its sprite to the player layer. Save your changes, and you should see our player running in the top left corner. Let's go back to the player class. Set the sprite's anchor to center. Next, create physics body for our player, and set its position to x 200. Y 300. Our player body will collide against two different groups numbered 1 and 2. Set body's velocity limit Y to 1400, so it will fall down faster. Next, create new rectangle shape. Use width and height from the sprite for the shape dimensions. Then, add it to the body. Also, add the body to the physics world. Create new function to the class called update. This function will be automatically called on every frame. Set the sprite's position to match the body's position. This way, the sprite will always follow the body. Now, if you save your project, you can see the player falling to the floor. Next, we should make our player jump. Start by creating a new function called jump. Then, set the body's y velocity to negative 1400 so it will jump. Also, we need to add mass to the body, and set the on-ground variable to false. This way, we will know that the player is no longer on the ground, and the body will fall back down. Last, we need to call this jump function as soon as we click on the game view. Go back to the main scene class and create new function called mouse down. This function will also work on mobile devices. Inside the function, Call the player's object's jump function. Now, save, and you should be able to test the jumping by clicking on the game view. You might see one issue with your player. You can jump while in the air. We will fix that soon. 
Next, we need to know when the player's body is colliding with other bodies. Create new function inside the player class called Collide. This function will have one parameter, the other body that we are colliding with. If our body is colliding with a body that is in collision group number one, that means we are colliding with the floor. Now, we can set our on-ground variable to true. Also, set body's mass and velocity on y-axis to zero, so it won't fall down anymore. Lastly, return true, so the collision will be solved, and the player's body will stay on top of the floor body. Now, at the end of our player's init function, set the body's collide function to the collide function we just created. Also, bind the function to our class. This way, the keyword this will refer back to our player class inside the collide function. Next, add new if statement to the start of jump function that will return if the player is not on the ground. Now we should be able to test our correctly working jump. If everything went well, you should be able to jump only when on the ground. Now it's time to add some obstacles. Create new class and name it obstacle. At the init function, first create the new sprite using obstacle.png as a texture and add it to the obstacle layer. Also, set its anchor to center. Then, add new body and shape. Use the sprite's dimensions for the shape so it will be the same size as the sprite. Set the body's velocity x to negative 500 so it will move to the left, and also set its mass to zero so it won't fall down. Next, the body's position. We want to place it right behind the right side of our game view and on top of the floor body. We can use game dimensions, our shape dimensions, and the floor shape height to get the correct values. Collision group for this body will be number two. Finally, add the shape to the body and the body to the physics world. We still need two other functions in the class. First, make function called remove. In this function, we want to remove the sprite in the body. Also, we want to remove the instance of the object from our scene, so the update function won't get called anymore. Next function will be update. Like in the player's update function, we want to copy the body position to the sprite's position, so it will follow the body. You can copy the code straight from the player update function. To see our new obstacle class in action, we need to create a new instance of it. Jump back to the main scene code by pressing the main class on the sidebar. Let's create a new timer that will constantly create new obstacles. Give the timer first parameter number 2000, which means it will be fired every two seconds. The second parameter will tell the timer which function it should call. Let's call it spawn obstacle and also bind it to our main class. Third parameter will be set to true which means that we want to repeat our timer over and over again. Next, add the spawn obstacle function and create new instance of the obstacle class. Now, save your project and after two seconds, you should see your first obstacle coming from the right side of the game view. We have one problem with the obstacles. If you turn on the debugging panel, you can see that every two seconds draw calls, bodies, and updates are increasing. That's not a good thing. We should remove all obstacles that are no longer visible on the game view. Click back to the obstacle class and go to the end of the update function. Add new if statement that will check if our sprite has gone off screen. Then call the remove function. Now if you save again, you should see that the values will stay low. Next, we want something to happen when our player touches the obstacles. Go to the collide function inside the player class. Let's check if the body that we are colliding with is in collision group number two. Then set the body's collide against length to zero. This way, the player won't collide with other bodies anymore. Set the body's velocity y to negative 600, so it will jump up a little. Also, set the mass to one and stop our sprite animation. Finally, add a new timer for 3 seconds with function that restarts our main scene. Now you can test how it works. Remember to save.
Can you spot one issue with the code we just made? The player can jump after dying. Fix that by adding a new variable called dead to the collide function and set it to true. Then, add that variable to the if statement at the jump function and it should be fixed. For the last thing, let's add scrolling backgrounds to our game so it looks a bit better. Go to the main class and create a new instance of tiling sprite class with asset bg.jpg as a parameter. Do it before adding the other layers. Next, add that sprite to the stage. Add new update function to the scene and decrease tile position x value of the sprite. Use the same value that you use on the obstacle's body velocity, so they will move at the same speed. Also, multiply the value with game.delta. This will make sure the scrolling will keep the same speed even if the frame rate drops. Great job! We now have the basics of our Endless Runner game ready. To add some more features, continue to the next tutorial. That's it! Thanks for watching and happy coding!